Welcome back. In my pursuit to find this fifth gear vibration that I've been trying to find for a while now, I pulled out the rear differential from the car and ran it on jack stands and magically the vibration was not there. So there could still be something that's uh, transmitted from the transmission down the drive shaft into the rear end and is then being felt. Uh, but I was already kind of under the impression that my differential needed to be rebuilt because I was kind of feeling like there was getting some wheel spin and I've been having some metal uh, glitter in the rear end for a while. I've changed the, I've redone the bearings. I've changed out the fluid multiple times in the past uh, two years. So I think the differential is on its way out. This is a uh, Auburn gear autocross specific cone clutch style uh, differential. This one is actually discontinued. They don't make it anymore. Uh, maybe for a certain reason, I don't know. So I can't really get it and I can't get it to service this. You can't take any of this part yourself. You actually have to send it to Auburn. They used to have an exchange program where you could send this one in. They'll uh, send you another one back that's rebuilt to rebuild this one or something like that. But they also don't have that program anymore. So this guy is kind of out the window. Looking in there, I can kind of see the, the, the cone a little bit and there is some wear marks on it. So that's not too good. But here I have a ready to go stock uh, differential. This, so this is what the, the Ford traction lock or something like that. So this is one that I went and picked up from a junkyard. Got it nice and cheap. So I've taken it all apart cleaned it all out, got all the parts uh, sitting here, and I am going to rebuild this guy. I got the carbon fiber clutch uh, kit, so the M4700C. Uh, so this is the track lock rebuild kit carbon for 8.8. .8. So we'll put all new uh, clutches in there, get them all in the right uh, orientation, and get this thing all rebuilt. I haven't actually done one of these before, but Reading through it, it seems pretty easy. And I, obviously I've already taken the whole thing apart, but should be fairly simple. I've looked up uh, some, also some tips to be able to get the, this uh, S spring clip uh, back in. Apparently that's the, the thing that people uh, have the most trouble with, but some pliers and things like that can kind of get that guy to go back in. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, using the same gear set, Nothing looks wrong with this, so I don't think any of my metal is coming from uh, this guy. The only thing that I can think of is my metal is coming from the differential. Um, we'll uh, get this all cleaned up, put back together, put some new bearings on here. I'm also going to be replacing the axle uh, bearings in there and the seals. I noticed on one of the sides, one of the little rollers is uh, messed up. So I don't know if that was causing any problem either. So one of those little rollers was uh, damaged in there. Uh, but I don't think that's making any kind of noise or vibration quite yet, but it definitely will be if uh, less unserviced. The rear end was actually rebuilt when this differential and um, the 355 gears went in. But man, that, that's gotta have been probably almost 10 years now. Uh, I can't remember exactly when that went in, but I think it was maybe like 2013, 2014 that I probably put that uh, rear end in, which was out of uh, a Cobra. But yeah, we'll uh, get this guy all put back together and see if that fixes up our vibration, hopefully. But the transmission is also in need of help. Uh, second gear is grinding, uh, is starting to grind pretty bad. So might have to do something with the transmission as well, but we'll get this thing all built up first. So the first thing, uh, order of business is we'll put in some uh, new bearings. So I'll take this over to the press, press these guys on, and then we'll start uh, building up the center section. To start with the, the clutch packs, we need to soak them in a friction modifier. So I got a little bit of that in a container here. The clutch packs do come individually wrapped. So we do not want to mix these up at all. They've uh, included the correct uh, shim on there. So we'll go through and all we need to do is soak 
these ones that have the friction on there. We need to soak those for 15, 15 minutes in this uh, modifier. We'll get that all nice and covered and I'll do each of these kind of individually because I don't want to waste too much of this uh, friction modifier because this little thing is all that you get and it is quite a, a lot and I have another one of these which will be what that goes into the the differential because this one will be thrown out so we will do that uh, while those are soaking so we have the the shim so we have the correct shim to get the the thickness the thickness is around 0.65 so we have that, we have the, the steel plates, and then we have the, the friction, friction plates, more steel plates, and then another friction one, another steel plate. So that's kind of the orientation that it will go into. It's steel plate, friction, two steel plates, friction, steel plate, friction, then shim, which is different than how the ones that came out, which I, if you guys will watch any videos, that's what they say a lot of times that these are different than, or we're putting them in differently how uh, they used to do them. This one has two steels in between the, the frictions. While we're waiting for, for that, I did go through and clean up all the threads on here and on the ring because there was a thread locker on there. So you want to make sure that you do clean that off. This is a, a thread that it's kind of hard to find uh, a die for uh, 7 16 uh, by 20. So it's the fine thread. So I had a hard time finding that, but did eventually find it at like a Ace Hardware. So got all those cleaned up. I already had a tap to clean all of those out. Those are all good to go. Uh, other things for this, uh, you come, it comes with a new S clip and then a new bolt for the for the shaft. So for this shaft, there's a new bolt for, for that as well. And taking this gear, first one will be steel. Next one will be clutch pack. Then we will go to steel, clutch pack, one steel, clutch pack, and then shim. Then this guy will go in here like so. So these things basically work similar to like uh, a wet clutch or a wet brake. Some are got the internal gears, why some of them then have the external thing that holds the clutch. Clutch packs have uh, the external tabs that hold in there so they don't spin and then the steel plates spin with the gear set. So that's kind of kind of cool. So that's how that works. There's splines on, on there that uh, have that spinning with it. So it's basically like, Wet brake, wet clutch, uh, pressure is in there that then uh, pushes out to kind of lock those together. So that one is done. We will uh, get this next one soaking and then do that one install. Next comes the sketchiest part of doing a diff rebuild is putting in the S clip. I definitely had to uh, jump out and fly across the shop a couple of times. So wear safety glasses, highly recommended. But using this vice grip, uh, needle nose vice grip, was the best way because just kind of hammering it in. And then once getting it in somewhat, able to pound it in the, the rest of the way. Then uh, next was putting in the pin. Make sure that everything is lined up and it should slide right in. And don't uh, install the securing bolt for the pin because the pin does need to come back out to be able to put in the C-clips for the axles first. And then put it on the ring gear, getting everything torqued up nice and tight. Able to do it on the workbench with uh, putting a, a long rod through the, through the center. All right, why I had the differential out is the perfect time to pull out the, the seal and the, the bearing. Got the tool to remove the seal, so we'll pop this guy out. I don't have the fancy pull or anything, that's why I'm doing this, why I don't have the diff in, but I have a long stick. So we'll stick this guy through. I'm banging out from the other side.
Also, there was a lot of uh, metal in the fluid, so I'm trying to get the differential completely cleaned out as well. So I've been draining it for a little while, jacking it up on different sides to try to get all this nasty fluid out. So since this is a brand new differential and new bearings, I'm going to need to re-shim the differential. So that's these shims that are in the side. So that's to get the, the preload or backspacing um, right on the pinion gear. So I'm going to need a little bit more in there first, and then we'll need to spin this around and check the, the backlash uh, on there and then figure out if we need to add more to the, the driver's side or more to the passenger side to get the, the backlash within spec. But first I need to add a little bit more to, uh, probably put it onto this passenger side to push this guy. Oh, well, maybe I'll put it on the driver's side first to get her deeper in there and then we can adjust from there. To check the backlash, you need a digital gauge and a mounting fixture. You mount it to the differential and then you rock the ring set back and forth until you get the backlash within spec, which is eight thousandths to twelve thousandths. Next up is installing the new bearings into the axle. A few taps uh, with the socket and a hammer gets it uh, fully seated in there. Next up is the new seal. Again, a couple of taps and that thing is in there. Make sure to put a little bit of grease on there so you don't uh, tear up the seal. Slide in the axle, slide on the brakes. Make sure to put the C-clips inside the differential. Get all filled up with fluid. And then the car is all ready. The rear end is all done. All new bearings, seals. Uh, the differential is all rebuilt, still the same gearing, so I'm still running the 355 that was already in there, but yeah, now running the, the factory uh, posi traction, the traction lock that uh, Ford has in there, rebuilt uh, with the carbon fiber disc, kind of out of a 2003, 2004 uh, Cobra, so that should be a lot better. The Auburn gear one that was in there, I think was uh, probably on its way out, but we'll see, hopefully this, uh, upcoming season of autocross it will uh really dig out of the corners is is the hope but let's take this thing for a drive real quick just go off on a quick little drive with the car gonna go get onto the interstate get up to uh 60 miles an hour get us in fifth gear see if uh kind of feel any vibration probably going like why just rebuild a factory uh track lock and put it in there now why not go with like a torsion or some other aftermarket unit and i just don't know what i want to do with the rear end quite yet so that's one reason that i'm just this is kind of a stopgap for right now is a cheaper alternative uh it should be a pretty good one for uh for right now so this is fully rebuilt but yeah right now i just i don't know if I want to keep a solid axle rear end, change up the suspension design, or go to an independent rear suspension, all these things, I'm still just trying to trying to figure out what I want to do. So, just trying to save some cost for right now. All right, that ends uh, this video. That ends up uh, the rear end. The rear end is uh, working. I think uh, I still probably have an issue probably in the transmission. Uh, I think I am going to pull the drive shaft, which is a aluminum one. I replaced the U joints on it. I replaced the um, bushing in the tail housing of the transmission. But I think I am going to pull out the drive shaft and take it to a place to get it uh, balanced and see if that uh, helps at all. It it should be okay but also again it's been in there for like 10 years and i think i even bought it uh used most likely uh, so there could be some uh, out of balance with it as well i've tried uh rotating 
it uh, on the the pinion flange as well just to see if that but it's only in fifth gear so i think it's transmission so we'll see but thank you guys for watching this video we will see you in the next one later